On my last project, I got told no cloud services. That means no Notion, no Todoist, no Google Calendar, absolutely nothing. I obviously handled it like a complete professional. So when I'm not creating videos or endlessly scrolling Twitter, I work as a freelancer in large companies and usually I get to pick and choose my own tools a bit as long as I keep things in mind like what kind of data are you putting in there and are you not you know, compromising our security. And then I got started at a bank and a bank is a lot more stricter than any of the other companies I've been working for. So when I mentioned something like Notion and Todoist they went all... How about new? You crazy Dutch bastard. With my usual apps taken away, I had to rethink my productivity flow with whatever I was given. Now to solve this problem, I need what I call the holy trinity. That is appointments, so anything to keep track of with who I have meetings, tasks to know what I need to do, and notes so that I don't forget anything that's told to me, definitely when starting at a new company with a lot of data. Let's dive into the first one, which is appointments. So let's start with appointments because that one's easy to solve. You need a calendar because when you're working in an office building, you're working with people and you need to know when to meet, who, what and where and what the topics are going to be. It's a simple thing, but absolutely essential. Most large companies in the Netherlands use Microsoft Office, but the things I'm going to add also apply to Google Apps. And that is you use what the company provides. So I usually get provided Outlook. I don't like Outlook in particular, but the benefits of having a centralized calendar system where you can see other people's meetings, appointments, which meeting rooms are free, is so much better that it will outweigh any productivity gain you would get from using another app. Why task lists? You know, why do you need this small task that you already have a Kanban board or a scrum board or a Jira board? And the main reason is, is that there's always these small tasks that don't fit on the board or are there before. A coworker asks you to peer review their code is a small example of that. Uh, anything before it gets in there. And the thing with task lists is, is just one line. So it's for all the really small things. And of course, I also add the big things because I like to have one overview of the things that I need to do for the day. So that is a mix of both, but at least that tells me everything I need to do in the day instead of like the Kanban board, which just shows me the big things I need to do. And then I manually have to figure out what the rest is and try to fit it in. Now, when I get into the building, I don't have a task list yet. I had to figure that out. Normally I would have to do it, but in this case I didn't. So the first thing I did was grab notepad and just start adding lines into that. It's very basic, but it's always there. I mean, I'm pretty sure iOS has a notepad equivalent and it allows you to get started. And on top of that list, obviously is find like a more permanent task list solution. I could use paper, sticky notes, whatever works for you, just something to tide you over until you found like the proper permanent solution you are going to use in SAT company. Since I was stuck with the Microsoft suite anyway, I had a look at Microsoft tasks. I am not going to use the tasks in Outlook. I hate having everything in one place and having my tasks right next to interrupting emails. So that one immediately dropped. A OneNote, I don't even wanna get started on. I'll probably rant about that when we get to notes. But then we get to Microsoft Tasks and I try to move my Todoist workflow into Microsoft Tasks, which means that I have like things that I wanna do that day. Uh, I do labels, I do filters and Microsoft Tasks didn't really provide that. Um, it's not as robust as Todoist in that regards, but there's a few things that I really liked about it. So for example, I had the today view and it's the reverse. Like with Todoist, I plan ahead. Like I put everything in like tomorrow and the day after and then things pop up. And with Microsoft To Do, your day always starts empty. It's, it's always empty. Like you have to fill it at the day itself. So you have to go through your other lists and then drag. And this is what I'm going to do today. And that was a weirdly positive vibe that I wouldn't have thought of before I got started on that app. Because instead of going like, I can do this and I can do that and then cleaning out my list at the beginning of the day, it's the other way around. It's like, I can do this and I can do that. And it gives a much more positive vibe. Actually, it was so positive that I started using that one in Todoist as well, where now instead of moving tasks from uh, overdue to today, I started moving them to no date and then pick like whatever project I'm at. So am I doing work? Am I at home? Am I doing stuff for YouTube? And then from that task list, just pick the things that I'm gonna do that day. And it was surprising how little tasks actually need a due date. And I could just 
move them around. Another thing that I didn't realize I needed, but I love having now is that it shows me everything that I've done for that day. So with Todoist, they just immediately disappear and I have to go to the Karma and clear tasks to see them. But with Microsoft tasks, they were like front and center, like they were checked off. You see the dash through it. And that was also like a small mental gain. And it shows that even though I've been using Todoist for over a decade, using other tools shows you the things that you're missing and then you can start making a decision if you really want that or not so now we're getting into notes and that means you know the gloves come off because note taking is one of my favorite things and you need notes obviously because when you get to a new company you get blasted with information and that information is everywhere they're in your co-workers heads they're in wikis they're in sharepoint sites they're in emails they're in separate powerpoint documents thinking you can just use whatever the company provided you even the best companies have it scattered all over because people use that and just start making your own database of notes so i had to do without notion and that's tricky because i use notion a lot in companies mostly because it's easy to share with other people to work together to get feedback and comments it's things that don't work as well in things like obsidian or Logseek. So the first thing I checked out was OneNote because, you know, we're looking inside the Microsoft Suite by default. That's the first thing to look at. And I wasn't too happy with that. Its way of freeforming and moving things around is too freeform for me. I at least need some way to align it. And I was just fiddling half the day, moving things in the right block and then editing in it and switching between it. So I kind of lost the overview while I was working on this and i needed a better solution luckily there was a tool in my toolbox that wasn't cloud-based and that one was obsidian because obsidian you install and all the files stay local so as long as my obsidian didn't sync to the cloud and it would just use local markdown files i would fully embrace being like secure because the notes stayed on my laptop stayed encrypted and didn't leave the building or went to any internet provider i started using obsidian and that helped a lot i mean i love linking my notes and making things together i added plugins to add journaling to it because of course i have like daily steps that i have to go through at the company and i have meetings that i want to lock details in everything was pitchy the only thing that i was hitting was sharing stuff with co-workers because i can't share it in an edit mode where people can comment and then provide feedback or make changes so anything that i needed to share i would have to either copy paste into an email which isn't very robust because you get your feedback back and you have to manually process it or i would chuck it on something like the wiki when it's done obsidian for me is like my mental head there and i would use it to get like the base of information and then as soon as i needed to like publish it i would transform it into something which you can easily share with co-workers another thing that i really liked about using something like obsidian is any company you start working in has a lot of abbreviations and there's all these small two or three letter things and they all have their own meaning obsidian of course i could just turn that into a page make the free letter added to it add like the long name under it and then anytime i had one of those short names in a conversation i could just hoover over it in obsidian and see what the actual name is now this all worked fine for a couple of months and there was actually no real problem there everything was running peachy of course as you do you're constantly playing with tools so this happened And what about very old friends? Now, I'm not going to go in depth because this video would get too long and it's a topic on its own. After six months of using Obsidian, I switched to Logseek, mostly because I tried it again and it became a lot better. Now, I could go on, but that's a story for another time. Remember, you're awesome. Keep it up and see you in the next one.